Good morning! It's our pleasure to welcome you to the virtual release of the 2020 Victoria's Vital Signs Report. We would like to start by respectfully acknowledging the territory in which we are located in today as the ancestral lands of the Lekwungen people of Esquimalt and the Songhees Nations. I'm Joe Perkins. And I'm Stacy Ross. We know this has been a challenging year for business and for the philanthropic community. We've all had to find that new normal everyone's talking about. But that hasn't stopped the Vital Signs report now celebrating its 15th anniversary issue an amazing accomplishment oh, boy it sure is Joe and for those of you who have joined us before for the launch of the vital signs report you'll know that normally we meet in person that's right switching to this online format isn't just the foundation's way of getting out of serving you that delicious breakfast <laughs> which you said was amazing so good uh, we of course had to change things up because of this pandemic that is still impacting our region but where there is adversity, there is often also opportunity. And we hope that this online format is allowing a number of people to join us this morning who were perhaps unable to join us in years past. As your hosts this morning, it is our job to welcome you to this online event and to introduce you to the speakers we'll be hearing from today. In just a moment, we'll be inviting the chair of the Victoria Foundation's Board of Directors, Zaman Velji, to say a few words. And that will be followed by a few words from the report's presenting sponsor, Coast Capital Savings. Next, Sandra Richardson, the Victoria Foundation CEO, will share with you some of the insights of this year's unique vital signs program. And finally, we'll turn it over to our keynote speaker, Jack Knox of the Times Colonist to wrap up the program for the morning. But before we get started, I would like to acknowledge our hosts for this morning, the board and staff of the Victoria Foundation, and in particular, CEO Sandra Richardson and the entire Vital Signs team, which includes staff and board at the Victoria Foundation. Now, we'd like to give you a sense of who is joining us for this presentation today. When you registered, you were asked a series of questions, beginning with whether you had ever attended a previous launch of Vital Signs. Of the 158 people who filled out that survey, 95 or 65 percent have attended a launch before, which is wonderful. Welcome. But what's exciting about that is that for 63 percent of you, this is your first time. We're thrilled that you are joining us. 63 people. Not 63 people? But it's still good. You know what? You were also asked whether you had completed this year's Victoria's Vital Signs survey earlier in the year. Now for this one, 57% of not you people. said- Not people. Not people. Okay. All right. Okay. 57% of you said you did complete the survey, but don't worry, we will be following up with the 68 people who didn't take that survey to find out why. Just joking. Finally, we wanted to get a sense of what everyone does. So we asked, what sector you worked in. Of the 158 people who took that survey, 86 of you work in the charity sector, which makes sense. 22 work in government, 31 in the private sector, and 10 are retired, which says is a very nice mix of people. Very nice mix of people indeed. And we've got an impressive program ahead, ladies and gentlemen. So let's get things started by introducing the chair of the Victoria Foundation Board of Directors, Zaman Velji, to say a few words. Thank you, Stacy and Joe, and good morning, everyone. On behalf of the Victoria Foundation, I would like to thank you all for joining us for the launch of the 2020 Victoria's Vital Signs. Victoria's Vital Signs is an annual report that combines the opinions of our residents, of our region, with data and statistics to offer a snapshot of how our region is faring in a number of key areas, from arts and culture, health and housing, to transportation and more, Vital Signs takes a hard look at our region's successes and its shortcomings. As chair of the Victoria Foundation Board, I am very proud of the Vital Signs program and its contributions to our region. What started 15 years ago as a source of information for the foundation has become a vital tool for municipalities, institutions, businesses, nonprofits, and individuals to use, not only to understand their community, but more importantly, to take action to improve their community. And today we are here for a launch and a report unlike any other before. The events of this year have been unprecedented and like every charity, business, family and individual, we are adjusting to a new normal. Our usual in-person launch event for the report has been made impossible due to the challenges of COVID-19. But thankfully, with the support of our partners at CHECK, we are able to bring you this online launch which means more of you are able to attend than past events. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected our community in ways we could have never imagined. In a short span of time, the ways in which we live our lives has changed drastically. 
as the, pan as the pandemic unfolded, we at the Victoria Foundation wondered what this would mean for our community, our organization, and for this report. First priority was, of course, the community. So when the opportunity arose to partner with the Times Colonist and the Jaw family to raise money for organizations in our region, supporting our most vulnerable residents, we jumped on it. And the result was the Rapid Relief Fund, which raised over $6 million in 52 days. In a time of great uncertainty and tremendous financial strain, our community stepped up with extraordinary generosity and selflessness to help those under the greatest of hardships. In all, over 15,000 individuals, families, and businesses stepped up to make donations, and 97 organizations were able to keep their doors open and offer help to those who needed it most. This meant keeping roofs overhead, providing nutritious food to the hungry, offering childcare for the children of healthcare workers, ensuring access to physical and mental health supports, and much, much more. On behalf of the Victoria Foundation board, staff, and volunteers, Thank you for this tremendous outpouring of generosity and kindness. When we were able to take a breath and turn our sights once again to the Vital Signs Report, we knew this year could not be business as usual. In fact, there were questions on how to proceed and whether it was possible or even appropriate to put out a report this year. But often where there is hardship, there follows opportunity. COVID-19 showed us a lot about ourselves. It showed us a lot about our community. On the one hand, it showed the generosity and kindness we are capable of, but it also exposed some of the weaknesses in our society. Those most vulnerable were challenged beyond the norm, and the inequalities so often ignored or hidden away were laid bare for all to see. And then in the middle of everything came the global call for racial reforms following the murder of George Floyd in the United States. Even with the challenges of the pandemic, people around the world felt compelled to come together and demand change. Each of us, as individuals, as businesses, as institutions, have been challenged to take a hard look at our society and ourselves to see where our shortcomings lie and how we can do better. Victoria and the Victoria Foundation are not immune from this work. And so with all of this at the forefront of our minds, we knew, perhaps more so than ever, the importance of putting together the Vital Science Report. We saw the opportunity to see how these challenges, these shifts in perceptions, the clarity often brought by hardship, would affect how we see ourselves as a community. And the report reflects this. As you will see, there are some significant changes to how we have graded ourselves as a community over the previous years. This year, there are also specific COVID-19 questions and data that shed new light on our community's strengths and challenges. I trust you will find this report as revealing and relevant as we do, and I look forward to hearing how others reflect on its findings. So thank you again for joining us. I hope you enjoyed today's event and come away with a new understanding of our community as it reflects all of the challenges and changes that surround us at this moment in time. And I hope that you find this report interesting, useful, challenging, and above all, I hope it inspires you to join with us in continuing to make Greater Victoria a kinder, caring community for all. Thank you. Spirit and service for vibrant communities. At Urban Systems, that's what we're about. Vital Science helps us to reflect on our contribution towards building a future that we can be proud of as a community of one. Thanks, Vital Science. Hi, we're Andrew and Craig Caven from Country Grocer. And we've been happy to work with the Victoria Foundation for many of years. And we're also happy to support the Vital Signs Report. Thank you for all your support. Pageant Publishing has been proud to design and produce the Victoria Vital Signs publication since 2016. It's important to take pulse of our community and we applaud the work of the Victoria Foundation. Zaman, thank you so much. You know, in addition to COVID, taking stock of social inequities has been something for all of us to reflect upon, and I'm sure we could all do a better job at that. Yes, indeed, Stacey. I'd now like to invite Tanya Smith, Manager of Community Investment, Vancouver Island at Coast Capital Savings, to come say a few words in acknowledgement of the significant contribution the credit union has made to Victoria's Vital Signs as its presenting sponsor. Hello, my name is Tanya Smith, and I'm the Manager of Community Investment here on Vancouver Island for Coast Capital Savings. I'd like to start by saying congratulations to the Victoria Foundation for your community leadership in developing another successful Vital Signs. 
Coast Capital is honored to once again partner with you as the presenting sponsor of this year's report. It's certainly an understatement when I say it's been a challenging year for all of us. But through the hardship brought on by the pandemic, I've been inspired by how the Victoria Foundation has rallied to help our most vulnerable citizens. During these challenging times, information is more important than ever as we work collectively to support our communities in a meaningful way. And the Vital Signs Report plays a critical role in helping us to understand our unique community needs. Vital Signs enriches our understanding of the issues our neighbors care most about. The Vital Signs Report makes a tangible difference to the future of our local community by providing meaningful data on key indicators, informing the planning and goals of local community and business leaders towards a healthier, stronger community. Beyond the report itself, Coast Capital is pleased to be able to support the work that comes as a result of the data. For example, each year we've been proud to work with the Victoria Foundation to host Vital Youth Conversations. These are events where youth come together to work collaboratively, to identify opportunities on issues identified in the report to create meaningful impact. In past years, youth advisory teams have focused these vital conversations on mental health and volunteerism. This year, the focus of the conversation was on youth financial well-being. Now, more than ever, it's important for us to encourage youth to have open conversations about what financial well-being means to them. Through these panels and conversations, relationships have been formed, connections have been made, and we've been witness to collaborative steps towards creative solutions. I'd like to encourage others to look at the results in this report and find ways for it to inform your work. Vital Signs provides us with deeper insights into the community where we live and play when we stand together, when we explore these issues together, we are stronger. This will be particularly important as we all continue to build back better with a focus on inclusion, resilience, and sustainability in a post-pandemic economy. Thank you again to everyone at the Victoria Foundation for your hard work and leadership, for your continued partnership as we work towards building a greater and brighter future. Hi, I'm Penny Sakamoto from Black Press Media. Now more than ever, it's important to get the facts right. And that's why at Black Press, we support the Victoria Foundation and the Vital Signs Report. It gives very insightful information to our community, and we're happy to be a part of it. Thank you. Hi, we're the Blue Heron Advisory Group of CIBC with Gundy. And we think Vital Signs is important because as a community, we need to agree and understand what our challenges are to move forward with solutions. After 46 years in business, TechNet has seen Victoria go through many changes, not just in the tech industry. We support the Vital Signs Initiative because we understand the value of using local knowledge to better serve our community. It's now time to introduce Sandra Richardson, CEO of the Victoria Foundation. Sandra joined the Victoria Foundation 19 years ago and has led the foundation's growth to become one of the top community foundations in this country, enabling the support of hundreds of charities each year that are improving the lives of people both locally and abroad. Sandra brought vital signs to Victoria in 2006 and has been a champion of the report locally, nationally, internationally ever since. Please join us in welcoming Welcoming Sandra Richardson for the presentation of Victoria's 2020 Vital Signs. Thank you, Stacy and Joe. Welcome, everyone, and thank you all for joining us for this exciting and unique launch of the 2020 Victoria's Vital Signs Report. As Simone mentioned earlier, normally we would meet in person for what is for us at the Victoria Foundation one of the most anticipated events of the year. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, however, we've had to do things a little differently this year, and we're now meeting virtually to celebrate and learn together. Personally, this is the first vital signs launch I've done in my slippers, and I could get used to that. Well, I miss seeing everyone in person. The switch and format does come with a silver lining as we're able to welcome more people to join us today now that we aren't limited by maximum capacity for an in-person event. 
So for those of you who are joining us for the first time, welcome. We're delighted you can be here with us. And for those of you who are attending, albeit virtually, for a second, third, or maybe even the 15th time, I'm so glad you're here with us. I'm sorry we don't have that hot breakfast that we usually have had in past years, but the logistics would have just been incredible. But hey, at least you don't have to get up so early this year. I said this could be the 15th time for some of you because this year marks a significant milestone for us, 15 years of Victoria's vital signs. What started as a modestly scaled experiment initiated by community foundations in Canada and rolled out by foundations across the country has grown into one of the most anticipated and influential civic resources available to our community. I say this not only because of my own pride in the program, and especially in the staff, board, and volunteers who produce it, but also because each and every year we hear from community leaders and influencers just how illuminating and useful they find this report. Many of the people are joining us today, and you can read about what they have to say towards the end of the report. It's just one of the reasons I believe so strongly in the significance of the report and why I'm so pleased to present its latest iteration to you today. Simone spoke to you earlier about the year that was for the Victoria Foundation and the challenges and opportunities we've all been faced with this year. I'm here to speak about the report itself, and I'll be telling you a little about how it works and some of its findings, along with how this is a unique report for a unique year. Our tagline for the report is measuring well-being, creating change. It does this by coupling citizen survey results with research from a variety of national, provincial, and local sources to produce a snapshot of both the perceptions and facts related to 12 key issue areas in our region. This year, nearly 1,800 residents across the capital region contributed their voices to Victoria's Vital Signs through the online survey. As with every year, we ask the residents to identify what is working well for the region and what needs improvement. For what is working well, residents flag natural environment, climate, and air quality as the top three choices, which is unchanged from last year. In terms of the most important issues facing our region, the top two from last year remain the same, cost of living and housing. But we see a new number three this year, homelessness. There's evidence elsewhere in the report this may be due to the pandemic and the social problems it has exposed. One very interesting result this year's survey has is a number of changes in how responses graded our community in the 12 key issue areas. Of these 12, nine have seen a change in letter grades. This after two consecutive years of not seeing a single change in any of the 12 grades. This has truly been an unprecedented year. Not a single area achieved a grade higher than a B. Seven issue areas tied for the top spot, namely arts and culture, belonging and engagement, health and wellness, learning, safety, sports and recreation, and standard of living. Tied for the lowest grades are housing and getting started. While housing also received the lowest grade last year, getting started, which looks at how our community fares and offering opportunities to newcomers and young people, has fallen from a B minus to a D plus, the largest shift in any of the grades from last year. Why such unprecedented changes in how residents see our region? This has been a year unlike any other we've experienced before. The COVID-19 pandemic, the protests and the rallies for racial justice, the immense shifts and disruptions in our daily lives, our lives and the community have been rattled to the core. And while we've been fortunate in our community to avoid the worst possible outcomes, these monumental events and movements have exposed and deepened many of the shortcomings in our society that have long been here. 
Many of you were asked a series of questions when you registered for this event, some of which are quite telling of what sort of a year it has been for our region and its residents. One of the questions asked, what percentage of respondents to the 2020 Vital Signs Survey felt a decline in their mental health as a result of COVID-19? The options were 40%, 46%, 51%, or 55%. I can tell you now that the answer is 51%, or about half of the respondents saying their mental health has declined because of the pandemic. You were also asked to guess what percentage of jobs for residents under 25 years old disappeared between February and May of the year due to the pandemic. The possible answers were 27, 30, 34, and 41 percent. The answer, which is found in the Getting Started section of the report, is 34 percent, which I find distressing. Young women especially have had it hard, with a 41% drop in employment compared to 27% for their male peers. Not every result of the pandemic has been overwhelmingly negative, however. Despite the terrible toll in our communities and residents, some people reported an increased ability to save money or to stay the same as a result of the pandemic and its resulting lockdowns and restrictions. You were asked to guess if 6, 13, 18, or 69% of respondents felt this way. I'm happy to say the answer is 69%, suggesting somewhat of a silver lining to these hardships. Another stat I found rather reflective of these times is one of our rising rates of alcohol consumption. In June, 28% of British Columbians reported drinking more because of the pandemic. Even more telling is the rate rose to 36% for families with children. Sounds like there's a lot of folks out there that are glad to see school back in session. Of course, this year we're all being asked as businesses, organizations, individuals, everyone to take a hard look at ourselves and our community and ask if we're as tolerant and equitable as we would like to be. Along these lines, one of the questions asked, what percentage of respondents feel uncomfortable, at least sometimes as a result of discrimination? The possible answers were three, six, 17 or 26 percent. Unfortunately, the answer is 26 percent. I think all of us would agree that 1 percent would be too much. So this figure is something we should take a long, hard look at. With all of this in mind, the Victoria's Vital Signs also delves into how we set about finding the right path forward a topic explored in our feature article. Based on the notion that COVID-19 and the pandemic has highlighted the best and the worst in us, the article explores how the way in which we continue to respond to the crisis will determine what kind of community we build for the future. We have seen an unprecedented outpouring of support and generosity from our community during these tough times, exemplified by the Rapid Relief Fund. But we've also seen issues long present in our community rise to the surface, making them impossible to ignore any longer. From conditions for the elderly in care homes, to issues of isolation for those living with disability, to people experiencing homelessness, to discrimination and racism, still in our society, COVID-19 has made it so no longer can we turn away. This isn't an article or a report of hopelessness, however. That is not the takeaway. There may be a lot of work to do, but the hardships of 2020 can provide the inspiration to do it. We can step up and see these strange and difficult times as an opportunity and a turning point. I hope that is the inspiration you take from this report. Thank you again for joining us today. I hope you take the time to read the report, reflect on its findings, and use the report to your full advantage.
I'd like to take a quick moment to thank the sponsors of the report, especially our presenting sponsor, Coast Capital Savings. To all the others who have contributed to making this report possible, thank you. Thank you, everyone. So much important local information is released every year by the Vital Signs Report. And Czech is proud to help get the message out, providing a broad voice to the Victoria Foundation and Vital Signs. Let's keep up this vital work. My name is Maya Scott, President and Employer Care Specialist at Boo Scott. The COVID pandemic has been a difficult time for all of us. However, it has allowed for a renewed focus on what matters the most, our health, our loved ones, our communities, and our planet. As leaders, we can take the data contained in this year's Vital Signs Report and put it into action to show compassion, to support others, and to celebrate resilience. Sponsoring Vital Signs has been an easy decision for Oakhurst Park Estates and the Ang family, as the value of their contribution is amplified so much by the impact that the report has on their community. We feel there's an alignment between what the Foundation does and the way it represents a broad section of the community and the work that Crest does to also serve its broad community. I think we make each other stronger together. Sandy, thank you so much. The 15th anniversary Vital Signs is once again proving to be an insightful glimpse into our community. Well done. We would now like to welcome our guest speaker for this morning. Jack Knox is an award, he says, an award losing <laughs> columnist for the Victoria Times Colonist newspaper. As a journalist, he has debated policy with prime ministers, sat down with a succession of premiers, and interviewed a murderer in his cell. He says he liked the murderer. <laughs> Yeah, he did. Uh, career highlights include being blasted with blowhole spray by Luna the Whale. It tasted like fish, Jack mm. says. And getting a phone call from Barack Obama four days before he, Obama not Jack, was elected president. He is the author of three books that grew out of his journalism, including two, Hard Knocks and Opportunity Knocks, both great books. They were long listed for the Leacock Medal for Humor. He is the director of the Times Colonist Literacy Society and the Times Colonist Christmas Fund Society. He sits on the May a Wish Foundation's Vancouver Island Leadership Council. He spent several years on the steering committee, uh, committee with the Tour de Rock for the Canadian Cancer Society, Cops for Cancer Ride, and he is involved with a number of other charities. You bet. Don't know how he finds the time to do yeah. all that. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our distinct pleasure and honor to introduce Jack Knox. So people keep asking me, and they do this in the tone of voice they use after your dog dies, Jack, how are you doing? To which I reply, best pandemic ever. Okay, that might not be the immediate conclusion you jump to if you look at this year's vital science report. Basically, what the report shows is a lot of areas where COVID has magnified existing problems. The vulnerable are more vulnerable. Stress levels are up. Unemployment in Victoria has tripled, yet the phrase housing affordability continues to be an oxymoron. The numbers are grim. During the pandemic, a third of families with children report higher alcohol intake, and three quarters report those children have suffered impaired learning, which ties into the joke bouncing around the internet about how 20 years from now, this country will be run by people who were homeschooled by day drinkers, which is funny until you think about it for a bit. The thing is, as much as the pandemic has been awful, it has also been a test that we, as we have as a community, passed in an impressive manner. That is, when we came to the fork in the road where we had to decide whether we were going to take care of ourselves or take care of each other, we chose the latter. Most people, once we got past a rather bizarre impulse to hoard toilet paper, have pulled together, have chosen to live by Dr. Bonnie's mantra of be kind, be calm, be safe. Nowhere was that more evident than in the Rapid Relief Fund. It wasn't just that the fund raised more than $6 million to help those who needed help the most, it was that it sent a reassuring, uplifting message to the entire community at a time when we really needed it. Remember, the Rapid Relief Fund was launched March 21st, just 10 days after the pandemic was declared, when we all felt like we were about to star in a dis remake of some dystopian Mad Max movie with armored muscle cars roaring down Douglas Street with terrified journalists slashed to the hood. Okay, maybe that was just me, but the establishment of the fund and the way people responded to it was a declaration with proof that we had each other's backs and were going to help one another through the pandemic. It was a reason to be proud. So here we are. Think of vital signs as a map. 
one that helps show us where we need to go and who needs a hand getting out of the ditch as we travel down this highway to the other side. Nobody knows how long this journey will be, but that's okay because we have already shown we can stick together, even when, especially when, the road gets bumpy. So why is this the best pandemic ever? Because for most people, even if we wobble occasionally, the worst crisis of our lives has brought out the best in us. We're gonna be okay. Jack Knox, you are amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your unique reflections with us, as only you can. Yes, thank you, Jack. Uh, on behalf of the staff and the board of the Victoria Foundation, we'd like to sincerely thank our guest speakers for their thoughtful comments and their insight. And we'd like to thank all of you for taking time out of your busy schedules to be here with us today. And we'd like to remind you that you can find the full copy of the 2020 Victoria's Vital Signs Report at victoriafoundation.ca or at various locations throughout the community. Community. Uh, thank you for being with us on behalf of Stacy and myself and the station. You've done this a few years now. I have, and it's always a wonderful event, and we miss you so much. We miss being with you in person, but we're so grateful that you were able to share this launch with us today virtually. Thank you. Enjoy your day. We'll see you soon.